So they say that black dicks. Let's when listen. When dropped trail, I went. Oh my god, is that what black dicks look like? <laughs> I was a little tight. I was a little like if I was black wearing dicks. black pearls, I'd be clutching them. I was a little like, oh my. Well, there's a stereotype. People say black guys have big dicks. Is that true? Yes, that's the only stereotype I'm proud of having. In the black community, there's a stereotype that black women don't like giving oral sex, mm -hmm. right? So the counterpoint to that is that white girls. Okay, guys. So, as you can see, I was listening to about um, the things, uh, what happens when interracial couples get real about stereotypes. So, guys, I've been doing my makeup and I'm going to do my makeup as I talk through this. Okay, I'm going to give my, my, my side of view about uh, interracial stereotypes. They say that um, black dicks <laughs> are big, but... Mm, I don't know it just depends on the person but that's the stereotype that goes by I don't okay so when you're dating online not online really when you're dating outside your culture you get uh, so many stereotypes that white guys um, like here in Kenya where I am I'm going to talk about my own experiences like here in Kenya People are so afraid of dating um, outside their race. They say that dating outside your, they say that uh, dating outside your race, you, you kind of um, like you, you kind of um, they're scared. Like white, like well, white guys, especially Caucasian. Okay, Caucasians are right. That they, they like fucking us. That's the stereotype. That's not what I believe in. That's the stereotype that goes on here in Kenya. Me, I don't know. I don't think so. It just depends on a, on a person and what sexual preference that they 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 like. For me, when I started dating, uh, the first time I dated a white person, uh, this <laughs> I was I asked. That's the first question I asked. I asked. Uh, lucky I'm open-minded and the guy okay there's no he, he actually thought the answer he gave me back when I asked him if he liked doing on the ass the answer he gave me was <laughs> I thought African guys are the ones who love doing the ass and all so you see how stereotypes go so uh, yeah and the reason why he thought that African guys like doing anal is because uh, they don't want to get girls pregnant <laughs> and then they have to marry them you know so okay the, the other stereotype okay there's this group in Facebook and the nickname they they think dating a white guy yeah many Kenyan girls now want to date a white guy because uh, they have this mentality that being white equals to being rich that's the mentality they have so if you date a white guy white person you you are automatically rich and you live this lavish lifestyle and they and then this group they call people who are dating white guys or they have boyfriends or they call them bibi yamzungu that's a kiswahili name bibi yamzungu it means a uh, wife of a white man <laughs> and they think it's really lavish dating an, a white guy and the yeah so so now many Kenyan girls want to date outside their race so what about let me just give me my own experiences and what I encountered so I had a mm, it was a long distance relationship he lived in the in Europe yeah he lived in Europe and he came to see me <laughs> We encountered a really cultural. Uh, <laughs> we had a Tulikwana cultural difference. Let me just talk in Swahili because now I can explain it really well. So the first time Ali Kujakuniona, the white guy, he came. I don't like referring to like that white guy. I feel it's like racism when I say that. <laughs> 
and then he came to uh, the foreigner let's let's name him the foreigner when the foreigner came to meet me we stayed together for yeah for three weeks we encountered truly truly cultural differences consequences of food the food okay he was used to meat uh, protein and vegetables no carbohydrates and me me umsta na Nairobi nilikuwa na lazima nikule ugali ugali kubwa na ndio mimi nilikuwa mkubwa hivi lazima nikule ugali kubwa so nilikuwa ananipikia alafu okay the other thing is he used to cook for me and cook so the first night he cooked for me the first time he cooked for me he cooked for me chicken <laughs> chicken and the way he cooked the chicken it was not the way we Kenyans cook the chicken you know how he just throw all the chicken in the pot and put water and then we have the stew for the chicken no he did not that do that he cooked the he pan fried the chicken he pan fried the chicken and and the veg, and our vegetables were raw vegetable, vegetable tables ya pikwa so ana nikia kwa 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 plate akina kwambia nini shanga i was so shocked uh, but i always like to do like i always um <laughs> i always do this always <laughs> let me zoom in first nini shanga sana hiyo siku but lucky ama nini um nini kula Okay so when it was my time to cook nika pika ugali kubwa nika serve na na mtu akuli ugali na sema ugali na taste like tasteless even whatever so another thing nasema when it's come to international dating watu atakujudge watu wengine atakujudge na set to foundation so online dating alafu mi kenya naweza pia na advice ni okay why uh, could data so, could data white man the love affection na si wa kenya tuko ile uh, tuko strong atupendi <laughs> kushow affection outside like kissing touching so could date your first uh, person, white person uh, and expect all things for these things from you So <laughs> when someone and the fikiri am pending but just communicate on what you you guys want. Mm, so foundation ni to me and Mary Mary K foundation. Can you see? Yeah, it's a Mary K foundation. Yeah, I used this on my face. I'm going to give my advice on a white person on a white person who's dating a black girl. So this is my advice. Be willing to talk about race and as a feminist and a woman, I could never be in a relationship with someone who didn't feel comfortable talking about patriarchy. In fact, I often joke that my go to first date question is what is your working definition of oppression so always always be there and ready to talk about the race and what or what things are comfortable with them and always be sensitive to their needs and uh, gender so the same goes for race while it's okay for conversations about white supremacy to make you real uncomfortable hey we should be uncomfortable with that shit being general aware of how play, how race plays out and feeling fairly well versed in racial justice issue is important and that's what and that's the start with the recognizing that you do in fact have a race and that you are whiteness and whiteness is, is in general plays a huge role in how race relationship play out socially and interpersonal 
personally and it continues with understanding that being able to talk about a race in a conscientious way is an avenue to show showing love toward your partner okay i'm talking on because i wrote some notes down and down to be really fast being honest about the ways in which race is complex both inside and outside of your relationship shows a willingness to engage with a part of your partner's identity and experience in a way that really holds holds them holds them because whether you are discussing current events with your partner or having a conversation about how race affects your relationship and yes it really does you have to be present okay number two be willing to accept that be willing to accept that sometimes you're not the go-to the go-to for rest conversations as a woman i know that sometimes talking about gender with a male partner even if he is well versed in all things feminist can feel exhausting sometimes i don't want to chat with someone who only has a theoretical understanding of gender oppression Sometimes I want to talk to, to someone who just gets it. So that's why it's safe spaces where affinity groups can be together without the presence of the oppressor exit. So that tough conversation can be had with a fewer guards up so that you can communicate thousands of ideas in a single collective side so that you can cry together with those who don't, who don't just sympathize but emphasize. So, and while it's important to be willing to talk to your partner about race and to feel comfortable bringing it up, it's just as important to be willing to step back and recognize when your whiteness is intrusive. So I've just read it. Hi guys, again, welcome back to my channel and thank you for staying subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe on the button down below. So today I'm going to do like my view on my dating outside your race dating outside your race and my what's my view on that so personally i have an experience of dating outside my race and i really i love it so let me just talk in kiswahili for my swahili viewers and for the people who doesn't who don't get my accent so me dating my first experience dating a white man i was really shocked the reason why i was shocked is because of how romantic they are they're really romantic okay my guy was romantic and i based it on every white guy <laughs> of, of my experience so maybe i stereotyped it a, a little bit so could date a white man they're really romantic so oh no joapa kenya men don't cook men don't cook men don't wash their um, dirty linen men don't wash their dirty linen and uh, let me just so men don't wash their dirty linen and they well oh, okay could date my friend as a magic could date could have very could have difference kubwa sana could date um could date in kenya not after could date in kenya and could date a white person i have both experience so my okay could date a kenyan man okay kenyan man first of all or uh, pikangi kupika ni amanamke or uh, shangingo but taking care of the children of the kids their main responsibility is going out and work and doing food on the table that's all there is to a kenyan man or, or, or what you get in a relationship now that's so, so, difference here a white man ni in my own experience a white man he will cook for you he will wash your clothes for you he will we or you'll cook together sometimes he'll cook for you and he will take you out he'll take you out to dinners he'll treat you like a lady that you are and um okay you only experience young you're not to my experience the photo you could date more africa now could date in kenya you can only get me when I keep a makeup now oh, even on the same I can go bad in multitasking so you don't want to know that you pay he saw it me when she had tried and she had a foundation now kill a kid to now he don't foundation at me younger Mary Kay foundation 
and hivyo na nivea na tumeanga hii ni there for my face for those who will be asking and my powder the powder that i use is dark opal black opal <laughs> in the shade of black so you know the, the difference yangu na ku date um, um, Kenya na mo, na nini na na nini oh <laughs> guy ndatukana asiju kizungu kama vanya muni tukana tena but doesn't matter <laughs> So I'm going to contour my face and then Maliza, your story. So the contour palette I'm using is Sleek, Sleek Contour Palette. That's what I'm using. I don't know if it, it can zoom. <laughs> yeah, this one is the contour palette I'm using. So the product I've used are uh, Mary Kay Foundation. Mary Kay Foundation. Mary Kay foundation and the moisturizer my moisturizer is Nivea if you want a really in-depth tutorial of what I've been doing and I have brushes it's really important to have your brushes when you're doing this yeah so you're not a 14 yet did you bring in as well you're not a 40 I'm going to put it on Kenyan man is on those tough out Hi guys, thank you again. So this is relationship advice in total. It's always important. It's more important to date someone who shares. It's more important. It's more important to date someone who shares your same beliefs and value than your skin color or race. Always be sensitive if you are dating your partner. Always be sensitive and always look out don't uh, put things because like you're dating she's experiencing them because she's black or she's so hi guys again so these are the things you should remember when you're dating that people close to you are going to say racist things and you should speak up i love my family so hi people are going people close to you are going to say racist things always speak up I love my family, but they, are, they sometimes say stupid things. Just because I did die in person, they think I'm rich automatically. And whether it's your well-meaning family or you're supposed to be socially conscious, sometimes people are going to say or do things that they that are fucked up. And it's your job, both as the partner and a fellow white person, to say something. They are your loved ones, so you probably know that you will work best for them, but in my experience, generally turning their mistake into a teachable moment will be more effective than just winning. Mom, that's just racist. Let them know why what they say is harmful, harmful and hurtful, but some myth. Give them a little history lesson, offer them some alternative, send them a useful YouTube video, but make sure that you actually address it. And to talk to your partner about how they want you to react, especially if they are present. Do you, they want you to be their liaison or do they feel more comfortable speaking on for themselves? If they are cool with you taking their lead, what exactly do they need you to say? Will they, will they want some alone time afterward or maybe some time to debrief with you? And how can everyone move forward as a group? Be sure to put your past partner's wishes first and recognize that sometimes that means that you are going to have the tough job of setting your loved ones straight. Okay, another thing, you're going to say racist things, so on up. What I'm saying is, and if you've developed this habit of asking my partner if he'll do things with me, with me, based on what happen, happening on the show, will you, will you do coke with me 
on because Craig and Manny are. Would you bind on me in a date auction or or no bid because it becomes a joke? Cure the two part episode. I'm reading some things. No, I was pretty sure I understood his tone has joking, and I was also pretty sure he knew that this was another ridiculous question. But I still knew that I had to own up to that mistake. So because whether I was joking or not, and also whether he was, it's not cool to make suggestion with racist undertone. So that's what you know. Mm.